At long last, Satisfactory Update 4 has arrived. That means it's time to break down the patch notes. There are a few major changes as well as plenty of small ones, so we'll discuss our reactions to these. But nothing compares to playing the game, so we hope you have it downloaded and are ready to get into it. But first, let us know in the comments how you're feeling about this update so far. And before we jump into it, we just want to extend yet another thank you to the awesome Satisfactory community. Just two weeks ago, we crossed 1,000 subscribers after starting this channel almost two years ago when the game first came out, and we have already reached 1,500 after our How to Prepare for Update 4 video became our most viewed by a long shot. We're glad you all love the video and that it helped you get ready for this update. We're just as big of fans as all of you, so it's super exciting that you're on this journey with us. Anyways, enough of the sappy stuff, let's jump into all of the exciting stuff. Aerial Resource Transport With drones being popular in both Factorio and Dyson Sphere program, it should come as no surprise that Satisfactory now has drone transport. These autonomous flying vehicles can quickly transport small amounts of materials across the map. Simply put down two drone pads, supply them with batteries, and watch your resources move across the world. Players have been asking for flying vehicles for a long time. While I doubt that we'll be seeing full-on helicopters and airplanes in the game, these drones should be very useful despite being power-hungry and having a low carry capacity. If nothing else, they'll certainly make your factory look busy. Lights It's been as much of a meme as pipes were, but lights are finally in Satisfactory. There will be ceiling lights, floodlights in both tower and wall-mounted form, and street lights. This will make playing during the nighttime a much better experience and add a lot of great options when it comes to looks. But there's more! You can connect a series of lights to a control panel, which allows you to control the color and brightness of each light attached to it. All the fun of your computer's RGB controller, but in a video game. Equipment There are a few new items when it comes to mobility. The first is a hover pack. This solves one of the biggest issues that Satisfactory has. While building in Factorio is easy enough as a top-down game, Satisfactory's verticality can make it difficult to construct complex factories. The jetpack has not been ideal for this, but the hover pack definitely is. It lets you hover at a convenient height above your factory, which will make it so much easier to build without getting stuck between buildings and belts. It gives that much-needed top-down view. And the best part? While the jetpack requires you to carry fuel in your inventory, the hover pack passively gets power from your grid so long as you're near enough to your power grid. Speaking of power lines, there is now a zipline tool which lets you attach to power lines and use them as a zipline. Combine this with the sliding mechanics on the rifle and I'm pretty sure you could play Apex Legends inside of Satisfactory. Buildings The first new building to talk about is the Blender. Yes, it is actually called that. This lets you combine up to two fluids and two solids, and will primarily be used to create fused modular frames, nitric acid, and more. Encased uranium cells will also be created in the blender now, and speaking of that, uranium pellets have been removed from the game, so we'll not go into that recipe anymore. The Particle Accelerator is a new high-tier production building with a large and fluctuating power draw. This will be used, among other things, to create plutonium pellets for plutonium production. Given the fluctuating power draw, this is a good building for making use of the new Power Storage building. The Power Storage building is something we talked about a bit before as it's been revealed for a while, these simply store excess power from your grid and uses it when needed. The accompanying power switch can disconnect a factory section from your power grid, which will be useful for saving power by easily shutting off an entire section of a factory. And lastly, there is a new resource well pressurizer building and extractor for the brand new resource wells, which we'll talk about soon. In combination, these buildings can harvest fluids from the new resource wells scattered around the map. Resources Nitrogen gas is a new resource that can be harvested from special resource nodes in the ground using extractors and pressurizers. This gas is effectively a liquid. The only functional difference is that you don't need pumps to move it through your pipes. Resource wells not only house nitrogen gas, but also water or oil. And there's quite a big list of brand new parts and resources which will certainly make more sense once we dive into the recipes and production lines that are new to the update. Also, 17 new alternate recipes were added, between new parts and existing parts, so keep an eye out for all those hard drives. There are four new project assembly parts to create, assembly director system, magnetic field generator, thermal propulsion rocket, and my personal favorite, nuclear pasta. Mmm, tasty. Balancing and gameplay changes. There are some major changes to late stage production lines, so 
just be ready for that. Have fun tearing down all your factories. The most important change is that all power generators, except for the biomass burner, will always produce its full capacity of power. This means that your power buildings will need to be supplied with as many resources as they need if you want your power grid to be stable. Before, power generators only produced as much as the factory required to run, which was a bit unintuitive based on how other buildings in the game work. All production lines containing bauxite and aluminum have been simplified as they were far too complex before. Nuclear production lines have also been changed. As mentioned above, uranium pellets are removed and the blender was added to the mix. Geothermal generators now produce a fluctuating amount of power instead of a consistent amount. Geysers also have purities, which will affect the potential range of power generated. Stack sizes for some commonly used items were increased. Inventory slot progression was also rebalanced. New crash sites were added so that there are enough hard drives for the new alternate recipes. Tier 7 and Tier 8 have been reworked, but anything that you had already unlocked in your save will still be unlocked. Other changes. As usual, the update is packed with optimizations. Hopefully games are running better in general as the team tries better ways of running all of the complexities of this crazy game. There are some very nice quality of life changes. Water extractors now have snapping functionality, production settings can be copied and pasted between buildings to speed up setup, which is probably the closest we'll get to blueprints. Building graphical interfaces have been updated so that the overall style is more cohesive. It should be much easier to understand what's happening in many of the production buildings. Another small hidden update that may have a big impact is that overclocking now supports math formulas and no longer rounds to the nearest whole percent, so it should be much easier to get perfect math now for all of your recipes. There are an absolute ton of other small changes and updates, but we just wanted to talk about the extra notable ones. But make sure to read the full patch notes on Reddit in order to see the whole list. But for now, we're going to stop here. So go play the game after you've left a comment telling us what new feature or change you're most excited about. And we'll get to work on our next videos, which will include an updated nuclear guide and probably other guides on the new drones and aluminum production line. See you in the next one, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already.